Hey there, welcome back to High Infidelity, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video. Today was the nail in the coffin for me. My wife and I have been married four years, dating for eight. I am 31, she is 27. Everything seemed fine until about two months ago when she started a new job. She changed her phone passcode, her insomnia made her sleep in the guest bedroom, and she was always on her phone checked out from our family. About a month after this, I noticed text messages from a male coworker. I didn't find anything, but my gut tells me it was taken there. They were discussing our marriage and emotionally cheating. After I discovered this, she begged and pleaded for me to stay and we can work it out with marriage counselors. This lasted all but two days before she went back to being emotionally distant again. Then recently, I look at our call logs and she continued calling him even after I set a clear boundary not to talk after work hours. Some of these calls were after midnight for an hour and a half. Some were right when she woke up for an hour. From here on out, I'm done and I'm just looking for my best options going forward. I will not be a doormat or backup plan in my own house. Update. After finding out about my wife's emotional affair last week and working on myself for the past two months, she is begging me to stay, crying, and not wanting to break up our family. She decided to break up our family when she broke my clear laid out boundaries after I found text messages from a male coworker, then phone calls continuing after I told her to stop. After this, our communication has gotten a lot better and she is back to sleeping in the same bed as me and fighting for our marriage. I don't believe I can ever trust her again. A part of me wants to file now and get it over with. Another part wants to at least say we tried counseling for the sake of the baby. While typing this, I realize divorce seems like the only way. I'm mostly scared about divorce because I don't want some random guy she brings home to abuse my baby. If we didn't have a baby, I would rip the band-aid off quick and be done with her. Right now, I'm just hoping for the best, preparing for the worst. Update 1 My STBXW started an emotional affair around September. We have filed for divorce together but have to live together until the final court date which won't be until late February, early March. At the advice of legal consultations, I am staying in the house until our 50-50 custody is final and I get my money from the home refinance. I agreed that the baby would wake up here at home today so we could both see her open her gifts. Walking by, I see a text on my STBXW phone from her AP. Instead of ignoring, I say, I saw your text from him. It's disrespectful AF that you would be texting him when you're with me and your daughter. This led to a talk where I, against my better logic, asked her what made her go outside of our marriage. It came down to I was insensitive. Because she had insomnia, she would literally slap the bed hard AF while I'm in a deep sleep. Am I supposed to do? Because you can't sleep, I'm not supposed to sleep either. She named one time when she wanted to go out on a date and I wanted to stay home. And she said we hardly talked about emotions and her day at work. She said I didn't do anything really wrong like hurt her or sleep with other women. She just wasn't happy and didn't feel like I liked her. Her exact words. So in essence, she got bored and sought after male attention from another man. The real kicker is that she finally admitted to sleeping with him, which she never did before. She said she didn't sleep with him until the papers were filed and she figured I was really done with her, even though I figured it got physical way before that, hence me initiating the divorce. I hate Christmas because a few years ago my grandma passed away two days before Christmas, and now I'm going through this. I waited for her to take the baby to her parents to open gifts with them, and then I broke down. I felt like I was healing so well, and it all came rushing back today. Update 2 I have been living with my STBXW for the past three months after deciding to get a divorce. We have finally got our court date, which will be in February. After telling my STBXW this, the next day she says, I have a bad feeling about spending nights away from the baby. Do you think you could stay until the summer even after the divorce? She also tried to frame it like it would help me because the place I'm moving is further from the baby's daycare than the current house and I would have to drive further to take the kid to daycare. I told her I would think about it but in my head I'm thinking, 
You should have thought about that before you cheated on me. I have pretty favorable terms in the paperwork that we both amicably signed. No child support, no alimony, and 50-50 joint custody. At this point, I don't know whether to be honest with her and tell her I have no intention on staying in that house longer than I have to, or telling her what she wants to hear until I get what I want. I fear if I'm honest, she can change her mind about the terms of the divorce or bring false allegations against me. Final update. I'm looking at a unicorn deal for a man going through divorce. No child support, no alimony, 50-50 custody. I have this overwhelming drive to tell AP's wife and tell all of my STBXW's co-workers and bosses about her affair with a co-worker, but my logical brain is telling me to wait until after our divorce is final. We're not using lawyers, and I'm playing amicable at the moment. I fear if I do it now, she could change her mind and lawyer up. Has anyone had a negative experience from alerting AP's spouse and co-workers before divorce has been final? I have already made sure her entire family is aware. Story 2 My soon-to-be ex-boyfriend is a piece of... Me, 27F, and this guy, 29M, have been together for like a year and a half. He's an electrician and a farmer. He and his dad own a few plots around the valley of my city. Now, I know you guys are going to judge, and I don't blame, but here's what happened. So I met this dude, and immediately we start dating like I was already his GF. I felt it was kind of a red flag, his intensity, but I tried to think that it might not be that wrong. Sometimes people are just like that, and there's nothing wrong with it. I was just like, just do it, go crazy, he might be the one. So eventually, like two weeks later, we were in a relationship. Anyway. I came to his place to spend the weekend, maybe three months after that, and the whole Friday I was feeling something weird was happening, like he was hiding something. Yeah, you know where this is going to. So I woke up really early the Sunday I was leaving, I don't know why, pretty unusual of me, but I think it was because the feeling wasn't going away. I look right next to me and he was full asleep, snoring and stuff. So I decided to go through his phone and what I found was so gross. He was replying to nasty girls on his Facebook, things like, yee, sit on my face, oh god, you look great, blah blah. I was legit red and so shook I couldn't even think. I smashed the phone against him and I asked what the actual was going on. He's all saying things like, I know, I'm a, I'm sorry, I just have that weird thing. I like answering girls' histories. That's my kink, I don't see them or else. I felt like a clown, really, for real. Is this even happening? I left as soon as I could, but of course he followed me and start begging every single day. I've never been through that before, so I don't know how he convinced me of getting back together after a few weeks. I know, I suck. And again, months go by and one day I went through his phone again and found out he deleted a photo that was taken one day he went out to a party without me. The picture was him in his car and a girl took the goddamn selfie. Again. I left, and again, he convinced me back. But I swear this never happened to me before. Everybody I've ever been with has been respectful and let me go in peace in each breakup. Anyway, so many little details happened throughout this year that made me feel repulsive every time I was with him, but still I couldn't let go, and I didn't know why for real. With the time I got answers, like I'd rather shut up than talk and begin with a fight, that I need more self-esteem. He was manipulating me all the way. I'm pretty easy to use because I don't like saying no or make someone feel bad or hear someone talking about me. I'm kind of dumb because I have never learned how to set boundaries or speak the truth of my chest. I used to say over the weekends, but sometimes when I work from home, I stay over until Wednesday or Tuesday, sometimes more days. So now, this dude has asked me basically to move in with him and take care of the chores of the house because he's busy working from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. with his job and the farm with his dad. I was like, bro, I work too, lol. This was supposed to be a team. Why are you saying it like that? And he said, well, I'm having two jobs. This is going to sound wrong, but it would be like you having two jobs too. Your actual job and keeping the house clean and things like dinner and stuff. I was like, are you serious right now? He really wants me to give up my life in the city knowing that I don't like his neighborhood because they sell and in every corner that I don't like living an hour far from my family. 
my friends, and a lot of things he does know I hate about living there. But I didn't say anything. I was listening, waiting for him to finish his speech. So he told me he knew that was not my thing, nor my lifestyle is pretty different from his. He told me he was like condemned to live in the valley because of the heritage of his dad and because he's going to be committed to that forever like his dad, but still that he didn't want to push me to do anything I didn't want to. And I was like, wow, finally, you had to lose my interest to tell me this. Unfortunately, I don't think this is going to work for us, but ye, I'm going to think about it. But now I feel relief that he does know this is not going anywhere. I feel relief that I realized a lot of things. I always thought he could settle down because he wanted to have a family and marry soon, blah blah, and a lot of other things, but his nasty will never change the way it stinks apparently. P.S. Today I found out he watched transgender porn.